You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's Under the Dome After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Under the Dome After Show. epicness wash over you hey everybody bing is for doing and we are here doing another under the dome after show this is season one episode 11 uh i am matt lieberman and joining me as always is the fantastic jackie borowski hello uh so much to talk about this week we had i don't know what just happened i know there's there's don't know i know i don't know either i wish neil bear was still here uh to give us some answers uh, he, he told us a bit of what would happen tonight, but I don't think anything he could have said would have prepared me no. for, for <laughs> what, what we just saw. No. Yeah. Um, so let's jump right into it. So Barbie is now on the run. Yes. I- accused of murder, running through the trees. The military want him. The dome might want him. Maybe. We don't know yet. Joe certainly thinks so. Uh, Julia is is still recovering from a gunshot. Max and Otto are dead. Big Jim is ascendant, and he's 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 uh, he's gonna be king of the dome. He's gonna be the monarch, unless he's not. We don't know. That's the thing, and we only have two episodes left to find out. Um, so let's jump way back to the beginning before we get ahead of ourselves. So Barbie wakes up on the couch after after a long night of not loving on Julia and she has kind of like just a very mature like head about herself she's just sort of like I just take me to his his grave and we'll deal with it she is the anti-Maxine absolutely whereas Max it's interesting to me though because um, instead of what I would deem to be a more realistic reaction Mm -hmm. it, it almost seems like they're just pitting these two ideas against each other like this woman who is very like clear-headed versus a woman who is like totally emotional yeah well i feel like the real reaction to that would be somewhere in between where it's like okay you got to get out of here for right now because you're kind of a murderer not kind of you really are you're a murderer murderer. and i I understand why it happened and that ultimately you didn't have a choice because he attacked you right but you didn't tell me about it and then you've been banging me for days. Right. And letting me develop feelings for you. Right. And still not telling me about it. And right. I had to find out from my dead husband's insurance policy. Right. You dick. But instead, you're right. Max is very reactionary, or mm-hmm. was very reactionary. <laughs> and Julia is more contemplative. She thinks things through. Uh, and I don't know. It might not be the most... And I know she's blinded by love, but even when which is are, also nuts because yeah. they've only known each other for like eleven days. But it's like Romeo and Juliet under the dome. Yeah, love under the dome with Dale Barbara coming this fall to CBS. Yes, it's true. She's blinded by love. It's an intense situation. She's lonely, and there's there's something to them as a couple. There's an intense pull there. And who knows, maybe that was fated by the Dome as well. As we saw in this episode, the Dome has plans. The Dome likes to make relationships. The Dome essentially, (laughs) and I mean this in the best way, the Dome essentially is Neil Bear. He loves... (laughs) He loves making these relationships and having them pop and, like, just coupling people off. He said as much last week, uh, not necessarily on the air, but, like, beforehand yeah. even. He just he loves making these couples. So the dome, the dome just wants everybody to be happy. 
The dome is just like except pairing people off, except for Ben. Well, Ben, <laughs> Ben had Truman, but then he just gave Truman away. Why didn't the dome start a storm when Ben gave Truman away? It should have done that. It should have done that right away. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Priorities, dome. Priorities. Yeah. So, so Barbie goes upstairs to change his sh- to to get get dressed, and then Max just comes to the door and just shoots Julia in the shoulder before the opening credits yeah. in the cold open of the yeah. episode, and we're like, what? Yeah, yeah. It's, she's nuts. She's nuts. And then Barbie took his his time. <laughs> she's taking Junior's nutso crown. She's like, she is. She's like, you know, Reverend Coggins left and. Junior's now becoming like good. Good. Yeah. So she had to come in and just be insanely crazy. Right. And then now that she's dead, Big Jim will take up the crazy mantle uh, that he was always he always rightfully owned but chose never to wear. Um, but like Barbie took his sweet ass time upstairs. He finished getting dressed before he came down in a hurry uh, to try to staunch the bleeding. Uh, called Linda, let her let her know that. Uh, Julia was was dying. She didn't get there in time, but Joe did, and it was the scene that we talked about a bit with with Neil last mm-hmm. week, where like Joe's, <sighs> Joe's like, oh, I, I'm not really good at driving and looking in the mirrors, and he's like, just get in the car. Yeah, it's like I, I've never seen blood before. <laughs> like he's just he's all he's like a bag of thumbs. Mm-hmm. He's it's it's like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like like a, a teenager. Like and I remember this myself. You're awkward. You're gangly. You're just kind of useless there's something there things that are useful aka the thumbs but <laughs> what use do you have for a whole bag of them not really anything right um so he drives him to the hospital and watches in awe as barbie uh chest tubes julia just like he did his field commander in fallujah and uh in the middle of this crazy storm and it occurs to joe that barbie might be the monarch and we had that tense moment where we thought julia might have died and we were like they I'm can't not kill her it. yeah they can't kill her but at the same time right having her have like the same way that alice died right after she and carolyn got like a nice scene together right. while they danced you know like her coming to terms with peter's death and being like i just need to see the grave and then we can move right. on that would be the necessary scene to have before she died. She is secure in who she is, and she is about to do something very positive, and then she dies. So the fact that she didn't die, happy about, but I feel like... But I feel like this isn't Game of Thrones, so you're not just going to willy-nilly kill the characters that people love, yeah. like the main characters. I did like Alice, but I think that a lot of... I would feel... I'm, And I'm saying this as a woman. I don't mean to speak for all women, but I... I do feel a lot of women would relate to Julia. Preach. So she's she's like she's got a good head on her shoulders. She's she strong. Has a good she's job. intelligent. She's yeah. intelligent. You know. She's active. She's active. Like I I feel like I feel like a lot of women would relate to Julia, and that um, it would be a great loss in the female like the that that age range for yeah. watching this movie and finding trying this to show. find a female character you would relate to. Totally. And and uh it's also not Game of Thrones in that you can't keep just adding new characters. Like <laughs> I, we weren't the only ones who kind of like raised an eyebrow when Max just appeared. Right. You know, and and we were given a good justification for it. She was hiding on Bird Island the whole time. Who else is on Bird Island though? I feel like there are going to be a bunch of squatters on Bird Island. I hope so. Because they just introduce Max, they kill her off, and then it's like, well, who else is waiting for us on Bird Island? No, season two, it'll be just like when they introduced the tailies, all the people who were in the tail end of the plane in Lost. You know, (laughs) they introduced them in season two. That's what we'll do. It'll be the birdies. All the bird, all the Bird Island people are. Just what about the people ashore. hiding in the basement of the cabin? Exactly. There is no basement. There needs to be a basement because that's where the gambling should be, and that's where they should have had the Fight Club. We've addressed this so many times. I, I feel like there must be fans out there who are just like, "What is their obsession with this cabin?" If you watch it again and see how awesome that location awesome. is, you would understand. Bird Island, though as a second location is pretty awesome i would like to live on bird island apparently there are just like mansions there and you can just get there by boat but only apparently like people don't go there except for rich people so it seems like a nice secluded rich place where maybe you could squat in a mansion matt lieberman just had a thought what if 
Uh, and it's called Bird Island. I know. But what if in the second season, the community divides under the two twin leaderships of Barbie and Big Jim, and one of them uh, has all their people moved to Bird Island, and the other one controls the town? And they're like diametrically opposed, but they're and they're like the sharks and the jets, and they dance battle. I hope yes. so. <laughs> That's the one thing Under the Dome needs, guys. And then we should have told this to Neil last week. It's just like you need 100% more dance battle. I Where call. are they, Neil? Where are they? Where are the dance battles? Where are the dance battles. We should have <laughs> we should have gotten some in the skate park moment in the third episode. I know. Um, yeah, but no dance battles. Real gunshot wounds. Uh, so Barbie, uh, he's after he leaves the hospital. We know though, um, this makes sense. So, n- not to like skip ahead to Dodie's story, but no, not at all. But <laughs> but a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, Dodie basically mentions something that she hears that the the military is interested in him, and it seems like up to this point we're like, okay, he's got good instincts, he's got good military training. To be able to do that kind of that that kind of maneuver where you're like sucking air out of someone's chest, that's just incredible. Yeah. It's like I don't think that's I don't think that every average person would have that kind of knowledge. No. And so he he just seems to be yes, he's got military training, but he seems to be almost exceptional. Yeah. So he's the one that the military's been looking for. We're gonna get more into speculation about that as we move forward. But um, the, he, I, I just want to finish this off before we move on to Big Jim. So he puts together this plan with, with Big Jim. They go to stop Max cold in her tracks. And Big Jim wants to shoot Max, and Barbie says, no, we're going to take her alive because... Because he's a good person. And, yeah, because you just want to be king of the town and kill everybody. Yeah, and he makes a fatal mistake. He lets his, he lets his cockiness and his natural alpha maleness get in the way of... Uh, survival because he lets Jim know I'm doing this and then I'm taking you down yeah and like not smart not smart don't tell your enemy your plan you were in the military you know this yeah you know this you you gotta you gotta try to keep them sweet I mean I know at this point there's not gonna be any trust between them but don't just say I'm coming for you yeah I think it's because he was in a you heard Julia days Sure. Or you inadvertently hurt Julia days. Exactly. He just he's he's not thinking clearly. Right. His love is in the hospital. She almost died. Um, Max is still crazy. Um, she he he said the one word that no girl likes to hear. No. So I <laughs> shot his girlfriend. That's insane. That's like, normal trajectory of events. That's like Maury insane. You turn me down. I shoot your girlfriend. Yeah, we could have had sex, but you said no. So I'm gonna kill anyone you want to have sex with, so that ultimately you have to pick me. She's the worst. She is the worst. Thank goodness she's dead already. What a slutty, terrible motivation. I know, but at the there same time, there are other people under the dome to sleep with, Max, and you could probably have any one of them. Well, what was with that creepy beat with Junior? Where like I know she was intimidating Jim to be like, you know, I might kill him, but at the same time, she was kind of like creeping, like, you are ready, aren't you? You're so she, built. Yeah, she. He was setting like after she gets rid of Julia. That was her probably next conquest she's like hmm junior looking pretty good right now exactly take it away from angie and then she'll control the dome well no i don't think so i don't know she's dead now so it doesn't (laughs) it doesn't really matter all right let's um oh but so they go to the they go to the cement factory factory and uh he has this very you know smart scheme to turn out the lights 10 minutes in and he's got the flare he steals the gun uh and then he turns his back on Big Jim, and Big Jim just execution style. Pop, pop. And then Linda shows up at, at the wrong possible moment. And then instead of, like, trying to get her back on his side, he runs. And I'm just like, I'm just like, what are you thinking? Of course they're going to think you're guilty, you right. jag. Like, it, I mean, I see why he didn't want to drop the gun, because he felt that his life was still in danger, yeah. obviously. But at the same time, he could have handed the gun to Linda. Yes. He didn't have to put it on the floor. He could have turned it backwards, handed it to her by the handle, and said, Mm -hmm. here's my gun. Yeah. Listen, you know me. You know me. I wouldn't hurt anyone. I don't know that, Barbie. Well, you kind of (laughs) do. I don't know. 
anyway, let's, uh, but we're going to get into Big Jim and we're just going to talk about how everybody fits in to this story and into the kids' story. But really quickly, I want to talk about uh, a movie that you've probably heard me talk about before, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro, who founded After Buzz TV, made a movie earlier this year called The Adventures of Serial Buddies. It's a really funny, dark comedy that is available online on iTunes and SerialBuddies.com, as well as video on demand services nationwide. It is $4.99 to rent, $5.99 to buy. Why should you buy this movie? It's crazy funny, and it's packed with celebrity cameos. Uh, Maria herself is in it, Kathy Lee Gifford, Beth Bears, Christopher Lloyd, Christopher McDonald, uh, Henry Winkler's in it, Artie Lang is in it. It's, uh, it's a really, really funny movie, and if you buy or rent this movie, the money that you spend on this hilarious movie that will entertain you for years to come uh, goes right into AfterBuzz TV so that we can keep giving you great free content such as this, great uh, background images that if you watch the YouTube, you'll actually see, like Love Under the Dome with Dale Barbara. We tweeted that out this week. That free content comes to you, but it does not, it, it, it does not come from free. Someone <laughs> must. does not come from free. Someone must pay for said wonderful entertainment. Uh, and any assistance that you can give us makes us better at our jobs, helps build our third studio, helps us make more shows every week so that we can keep giving you the shows that you love for many, many years to come. Okay. Plug over. Back in. Big Jim Rennie. He has his kind of like his come to Jesus moment of just like I'm uh, like or no, it's his real world. I, like, I know, I know, I know, I know. I Hold don't on. think Jesus wants Hold anything on. to do with Big Jim. Well, he doesn't, but he might come anyway. Anyway, <laughs> no, it's it's his it's his real world opening credits moment mm -hmm. where it's like um, you know it's time to stop being fake and start being real. You know, uh, and he he's done being nice. He's gonna be real, and he's just. I going think he to... was real before. I think it's just now. He's no longer hiding it. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just swaggering almost. Yeah. He's before he would do things and then kind of sweep them under the rug. So you always kind of knew he was an underhanded guy, but now he's just like balls to the wall, like, I am the king of the town. Yeah, but I love how like kind of nervous he was when uh, Max was like, I'm going to go back to Bird Island. He's like, that might <laughs> he's be like, such a good idea. Yeah, please. <laughs> Please don't go to there. Don't, don't go. <laughs> you stay in my house, maybe even. Uh, you, you don't know. want to find your mother dead and or missing. And then she finds her dead before she even gets off off of the mainland. She finds her on the beach. She just goes for a thought provoking Bird stroll. <laughs> Bird Island has a has a good um tide that a very heavy heavy waves. Totally. Well, it's a storm. Yeah. It is a storm. That that bring in full bodies. That bring in full bodied bodies anyway <laughs> that's that's what happens when you think you're funny you start saying dumb things uh and you waste people's time anyway so big jim i really loved this scene that he had with junior this week down in the shelter and he's trying to make junior understand that he might not survive this that she may co come after him and he kind of tries to apologize for being such a crappy dad. It's like it's like part apology for being a crappy dad. Part excuse or No, and then part like justifying his actions, I yeah. feel. Not not as an excuse for being a bad dad, but justifying his actions because Junior raises an eyebrow when he gets down there saying, "Well, I thought all the guns were taken away." I'm not everyone. And uh. yeah, and so he's he's part trying to explain to Junior like this is how the world is this is what's going on and then it kind of devolves into sorry i'm a sucky dad yeah do you think junior buys it i think um i think he wants to i think he yeah i think it's he the wants cycle to. of abuse yeah you know like he he wants he's constantly mourning the family that he'll never have right do you know what i mean yeah and uh he so wants Big Jim to be telling the truth and to be, you know, really apologetic for all the crap he's given him all these years. He really makes Junior feel like garbage. And, and I think that that's part of why Junior really lashes out in those big ways. Um, and we'll it get also doesn't help that, like, 
Big Jim is mentally unstable. Yeah. Junior is mentally unstable. The mother was obviously mentally unstable. Well, Big Jim, I, I wouldn't call him mentally unstable. I think he just has a very different idea of what is right and what is wrong. He He's done everything with purpose. Everything wrong that he's done, he's but known like, that he's done. But even though he does something wrong, in normal humans, there's not... There's not this instinct that, oh, something messed up. I'm just going to shoot my way through it. There's there's something a little off, like serial killer off, where it's like, yes, certain actions are justified. But at the same time, you put an average person in that situation and they're not going to be like, mm, I should probably shoot this person. Mm, I should probably let this person drown. But it's not a, it's not a serial killer because a serial killer needs to kill. It's like an inner an inner need to to kill and feel what that feels like i think he's just so 100 percent driven and committed to his purpose which is his perverse way of protecting the town right that he'll kill anyone who threatens that no i see that yeah i definitely see that yeah um which like goes back to what neil was saying last week you know he said we were like it, does he really love the town or does he love power he's like no big jim loves the town Mm -hmm. And and Barbie this week had our perspective on it, which was like, you don't love the town. You love power. Yeah. You love your kingdom. So I think it's a bit of both, though. It's like a guy who is on a power trip also loves the town. Like yeah. he, you can't help. But sometimes when people get into those situations and they get a taste of that kind of power, they just can't stop. It's like he's high on his own power. Yeah. It's true. Oh, Big Jim. Oh, Big Jim. And it is his whole, his, this just comes off like a master stroke. He goes to, he goes to Linda and he, he tells her, you know, like, look, are you going to condemn me for trying to save the town or are you going to take this stranger who totally has killed people if you think about it and, and, you know, convict him? She put, uh, he puts so much doubt in her mind. Mm hmm. And then she kind of, and I really hope that she doesn't. I'm worried that she's going to become Big Jim's attack dog. Yeah, I think Linda's too smart for that. But right now, it's like, I feel like what happens to Linda is she's very easily, like, uh, she responds easily to suggestion. Yeah. So people are like, Linda, but what about this? And she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they're like, but Linda, what about this? And she's, she's like, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's what she's been doing this entire season. It's like people have been suggesting things to her, and then she's just kind of like, uh-huh. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to go arrest that person. And I want her to have more of a backbone, yeah. darn it. She needs to make more of her own decisions. She knew, well, she knew, like, she had it right on the money last week when she came to Big Jim's doorstep, and she's like, I'm going to take you into the station. And I don't know. Hopefully she sees that, his whole empire is going to get out of hand. Hopefully she and Barbie are able to have a heart to heart. Who knows what he's doing off in the woods. I wonder if he goes back to the cabin. Although that would be like, <laughs> that would be the worst hiding place in the world. It's the site of a murder. Um, you know, just camping in the cabin, cabin in the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, big Jim, all the pieces fall into, pl into place. He gets to frame Barbie for all these murders, and now he reasserts himself as, you know, chief of the town. You know, he is the law. He is the government. Uh, he is the personal connection between uh, all the town's people and their town. He is and he makes this announcement where he's basically, you know, he's saying that, okay, we're going to, you know, Barbie is public enemy number one. We're going to find him. We're going to hunt him. And then we're going to try him for murder and kill him. Yeah. And it's a uh, death I mean, penalty. Yeah. And he's basically, I'm like, first off, yes, I know you're the only councilman there, but did Linda, before you went over there, say this was okay? Because you're just basically speaking for the whole town yeah. and then basically making up your own rules and everybody seems to be okay with it. Yeah. Which is like. Bonker, He's just it's like, like bonkers and yet. As king. Yeah, it's bonkers and yet. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they've known him for so long as a decent guy that they're willing to trust him. But he's saying some things that really are overreaches. And I'm hoping right. that in the next episode, people try to challenge him on it. Um, we will have to just wait and see on that. 
Okay, uh, I just want to talk really quick about iTunes. Thank you to everybody who has rated and commented on iTunes and on YouTube and uh, has tweeted at us about the show. We love having a conversation with you guys and hearing what you think, giving us your theories and telling us how we're doing. Uh, so if you could rate us on iTunes, it would be a huge help for us. Uh, we love five-star ratings. It's, what's ke it's what keeps us in the top ten every week. Number three for the second week in a row, yes. which is fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so the more ratings we have, the more our bosses know that you guys love this show and that you want it back next year, and we would love to come back. We would love to come back. Thank you for commenting. I love reading the comments. Yes. You guys rock. We have the best fans you in the whole so world. You guys are so funny. Yeah. It's awesome. So awesome. All right. So let's talk about the kids because they started an effing shitstorm this week. There are so many things happening. I was like, oh, so many things. Oh, so much shocking. I know. Well, and not a lot of, like, I in this episode, whoever wrote it, it felt like the things that were happening were interesting, but the dialogue itself was clunky. Yeah, it was very, very direct. It yes. could have used, like, another quick pass. Yeah. Uh, especially with Angie, who, like, just, I was so frustrated with her this Poor week. Angie. I know, because she's been through so much, right? And it's not her fault that the show is trying to make us like Junior. Because he's done some unforgivable right. things. he really has. But now we feel more sympathy for him, I think, on some level than we do for her. Yes. Because she doesn't have, like, a past full of abuse and, like, you know, a horrible dad who's a murderer. Well, and the other thing is the things he's starting to say before when you were like, oh, that's crazy, they, they're making sense. Yeah. It's like you, there, were, there were the pictures from his mom. He was telling Angie she was sick. It's like... Well, he's kind of right at this he's point. He's the only one who knows what's going on. Yeah, he's like tapped in. He's the he's the only one who has been tapped in since the beginning. Has been tapped in since the beginning. Right. And I think at some point, it's like as an audience, you're like, okay, Angie, I think it's time to like, yeah, you don't have to have sex with him or be his girlfriend, but just let up on him a little bit. But at the same time, we're saying let it go. Just to, to keeping her underground for days. Yeah. Kidnapping I know. her. You know, like putting his hands on her, not necessarily going too far, but still, like, while she was kidnapped, right? And then she nearly died when she, uh, she nearly drowned in there. So how is she really supposed to forgive him ever? Right. You know? Like, but at the same time, for the sake of... But then we see this parallel where Julia forgives Barbie for killing her husband. That's so. true. Well, maybe that's why. But then, like, I don't know. I don't know what's right anymore, Jackie, <laughs> because like I have prob I have qualms with that because I don't think that she should forgive him. I think he did a grievous thing, but for the sake of of entertainment and for the sake of moving the show forward, there needs to be a graceful way for her to be able to forgive him, him understand, right? But still really address what happened with the gravity that it deserves. And right. I. I for the life of me, I'm not sure how to do it. I mean, they're trying. They they've had him save her life now. I countless mean, times. Countless times. I mean, he shoots. He shoots that the only guy that Junior has killed is the, is her would be rapist. Yes, is is that guy? And then and then in this episode, he saves her from the flying park bench, mm -hmm. and she basically kind of realizes, okay, now now he's like now the dome is happy that we're where he's back in the group but you know you know what it like it, it for me what it could be and it would just be so easy is like he says you know it's not selfishness it's love just like just say fine you love me i understand that but i don't have to love you back right right you know i'm not i i'm not ready for that i don't know that i will ever be you know you and the problem is she's a teenager so she can't find those words to say Hey, like it's okay yeah. that you love me instead of because when whenever you're a teenager and someone just keeps laying it on thick like that, your first reaction is to be like, oh, oh my god, you know, yeah. like too much. Yeah, no, you're smothering me. Yeah, and so instead, you know, a more adult reaction would just to to be like, okay, well, I understand that you love me, but mm -hmm. uh, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen. But instead, she just goes off on him, and the wind starts howling as you see his face just darken and get all puppy dog sad. And then he he, he leaves, and the dome just starts this crazy storm, uh, which, like, 
wasn't quite a tornado, but it was. Mm-hmm. Like, it never hit the ground. Like, I guess it, they stopped it in yeah. time. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what it was. It, it was, was like trying to be a tornado. Yeah, it, it didn't quite know what it wanted to be. It was like a teenager tornado. It's confused, it's hormonal, you know, it's growing every second. Um, but uh, thankfully they stopped it in time. And I guess we're learning more about the about their fate and about how the dome wants them to be. The dome wants harmony. Yeah, and if, Wait, between these four. Yeah. The dome wants harmony between them. And then the dome left like white paint poops. I just don't understand. No, no, no. They painted. The, oh, they painted the those kids things to match. Painted. I was like, when the stars went out, they just pooped paint where no. they left. The, the, like, the dome, the dome egg, did not poop <laughs> paint. They painted the constellations so that they wouldn't forget them. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure about that one. No, they painted up the barn so that they could they could find it, and they decided to go to Bollingwood Bridge. After after all this, after like, and, but that goes back to Angie again because she lashes out at Joe. Where have you been? Why were you gone for so long? Uh, Julia was dying. Okay, and I don't know. I just think she kind of like overreacts. Uh, whereas like Nori to me has like the right reaction about all this. Just like it's too much. Yeah, it's too it's a much. lot of pressure. It's yeah. Cr- Crazy pressure yeah. to be fated by this godlike right. entity that has the power over the weather and who lives and who dies and so on. Um, but they go to Bollingwood Bridge. Because their paint poop told them to. Because their paint poop told them to, <laughs> that's right. And they all touch the dome at once, revealing potentially the monarch, or but it's not. Because Joe, you know, Joe did, Joe thought that maybe Barbie was the monarch because yeah. he saved Julia. And, uh, but maybe Big Jim is the monarch because he's taking over maybe the town. That, maybe the monarch will be crowned isn't a prophecy, it's a warning. Yeah. It's saying he will be crowned unless you stop him first. Um, and all of them imagined butterfly knives in their hands. Such a creepy, king esque kind of uh, visual mm-hmm. of just like Big Jim's just smiling and then just the blood starts seeping out all over his body. Four different places. Mm-hmm. And they all need to stab him. So they need to find butterfly knives. I don't think it's literal that they have to stab him. But uh, Junior freaks out. Obviously, because it's his dad. Yeah. And it, it gives some, some shading to the line that Neil was talking about. He said coming up we're going to see a moment where Junior is like, be careful, Dad, you know, or something might happen to you. Right. So that's like a real threat because now it looks like the kids have to kill Big Jim. But the show wouldn't do that. He's, we don't know. There could be another big bad guy hiding on Bird Island. I that guess. That was very alliterative. Um, yeah. There might, maybe all of our bad guys are going to come from Bird Island. Who knows? Maybe there's a hidden underground prison on Bird Island. <laughs> we'll find- <laughs> Alcatraz. Slash Bird Island. Yeah, or somehow the army gets through the dome. We don't know, but I, I feel like they wouldn't kill. They wouldn't kill Big Jim, but then how would the dome feel about that? I, I don't know. Or maybe the dome gets angry because they don't kill Big Jim. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, uh, like if they can't kill Big Jim, the dome would be very upset. But I don't think the dome. Could the dome kill him? I mean, it wants them to kill him for some reason. The dome can't do things itself so it but it, it can though it it man it, it controls the elements around it like it yeah. can make it can make rain by convincing the elements to move to make rain like mm-hmm. the dome didn't like reach out its dome hands and make some rain like it can i feel it has the power of suggestion, suggestion. yeah i was i'm like trying to think back but like the the epidemic earlier in the season wasn't the dome necessarily. Uh, the epidemic wasn't the dome when that woman touched the dome and it made her her pregnancy go go into labor. It just suggested touch the dome and it was the electrical current yeah. that did that. So maybe you're right. It can't actually kill people. It can't. It, it it almost is like it wants to be human. It can't. So it tries to affect all of these things around it in order to bring about what it wants. Like a like hmm. a creepy like 
a godlike figure almost. Maybe that's why it's so invested in these in these interpersonal relationships. It can't have these relationships. Right. So it's just very interested. It, it wants to see them succeed. Right. Much like a television viewer. You know, we want the, we want everyone to be happy. Am Dome, I wrong? when are you going to care about uh, Phil and Dodie? Yeah. When are we going to see them get together, Dome? <laughs> Dang it. Gosh, Dome. <sighs> well, I mean, the Dome doesn't like Dodie. So maybe the Dome is keeping them apart. It just doesn't care. Because yeah. it doesn't it's like her. Keeping them apart and letting Phil get shot. <sighs> Phil gets shot. I swear, if that sling comes off before the end of the season, because it's only been, he was shot like what, four days ago, three days ago, right? And he's already up and about and he's basically fine. And and it's just going to be like, ah, I've had this sling on for six days, but now I have full use of my arm because it's television, you know? Like by, by rights, Julia should be in a hospital bed from now until like at least the middle of next season. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, unless there's a significant gap between seasons, which I don't know why they would do that. It's a very serialized show. Um, but I just feel like you kind of play with time because it's TV, and right. I want it to be real. You want you want Phil at a commission for that long? And no. Julia? I, what I want from Phil is I want him to be more than a side character, and I want him to have, like, an arc. Yeah. That would be cool. Instead of coming in and being like, Barbie, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's like, like... Because he knows... I mean, he really is the only character that knows Barbie, which is exactly why they had to bring him in with him driving and everything. Yeah. Because he's the only character that can give any background on Barbie, and the background that he gives is the shady... Yeah. The the shady bookie kind of background. But that's what I'm saying. is like he was just an exposition fountain mm-hmm. this week. He was just there to deliver information and offer up a car and have like a joke when she steals his car. Uh, but I want him to like have a story. I feel like the same thing's happening to Dodie right now, though, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. She only really exists wish they were, to be I, suspicious, right. or to say, "Hey, there was a, a storm. Maybe it affected the way we can hear the radio." Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, we need we need more stories from our people, and maybe once we have some deaths, there'll be more room. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, was I the this only Game of Thrones rules again? No, it's not. Five people die, and we hear the other stories now. Yeah, that's. I mean, kind of what true. needs to happen. But like, here's the thing. Under the dome, 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 All right. Anyway, but like, was I the only one who thought Linda was going to die in this episode? Yes, and I'm so glad that she didn't. Yeah. But I, feel I mean, like she still might. I feel like she still might die. I don't think they can kill Julia off. I just don't. No. But I feel like not yet. Yeah, but I well, I don't. I feel like Julia and Barbie are, and because this is CBS and not HBO, they're. I don't think they're going to kill off our heroes. And I feel like Barbie and Julia are our heroes, as are the four kids. And I feel like those are the characters that are untouchable. Like I feel like Linda might die just because. You know, people love her and they would care if she died. Yeah. But at the same time, up to this point, she's only been serving as part, like part of the plot almost. Yeah. Like you don't get she, it. We need to be more attached to her before they'd kill her off. Yeah. They need to give her more of a storyline. You're right. Okay. So, uh, what are our betting odds? Who dies next? Um, Linda. That's my bad. I mean, yeah, it's 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 Linda. it's Linda. I'm hoping we get to enjoy her a little while longer before she dies, but she's probably dying. Like, I just I don't know what function and, she serves. And I know that Neil was like, "Oh, he can't he can't just kill Linda just because she knows this information or whatever." Yeah. But I feel like eventually it's going to get to a point where where Linda comes to know too much or she gets into a suspicious position she that makes changes, it easy. She changes her mind about Barbie and she she is going to let him go. Like yeah. if, if they catch him and there's a trial, uh, she like flips on Big Jim and then Big Jim tries to betray her and pin it on Barbie, but then it all goes sideways. Yeah. That's just a thought. Um, anyway, do we have any more like stuff about this episode or can we just pr- start predictions? Um, well, Dodie... Heard yes. that thing on the tape. She heard that thing coming from the outside coming world. Coming from the outside world. So I wonder if we're going to be able to hear other things from the outside world after this. I don't know. It, she was only able to hear it because of the weather disturbance. Mm-hmm. So 
maybe we can just get more storms. I don't know. And it gave her just the right information. Maybe we should have the four kids all touch her radio at the same time. <laughs> and then they'll unlock the radio powers. I just want to know what on earth that means, because it sounds like the army's operating from a prophecy. Right? Which is, which is crazy. Yes. Yeah. I really want to know what that is. And they said they saw him on a tape, so I want to know what the well, tape no, the, was. The tape was from Visitor's Day. They recorded everyone's faces from inside the dome who came up to the dome on Visitor's Day. Oh, okay. I got yeah. that. All right. Um, so since we're doing it anyway, let's move into predictions. Whoop, whoop. And now, your After Buzz TV. Predictions. <sighs> okay. So, Jackie, we have a potential murder of Big Jim on the horizon. Uh we don't know necessarily. So the do so we're, we've always been trying to analyze the dome's agenda, right? Mm -hmm. Big Jim is a danger to the people in the dome. Yeah. So of course the dome wants him dead, or the dome wants him, or maybe the dome wants him dead because he's not a good person. Right. Um. So why do you Neil think Neil also insinuated that the reason these kids are all involved together is because they have pure hearts? It's true. So yeah. maybe the dome is ultimately trying to cultivate like a utopian society. Of like all good people, like wouldn't that be nice? That would be nice. And Big Jim is the worst person now that Max is dead. Big Jim is essentially the worst person inside the dome, so he's got to go first. It's true. Yeah. Oh God, what if the, these kids are forced to like cull all of the bad people, like kill them all? That would be bad. But like, here's the thing, though, right? If they murder someone, they're not pure of heart. Like, no. what? If, what if this is a test? Maybe it is a test. Yeah. I don't know. Like it, it, it's curious to me that it would ask them to kill someone, even someone as bad as Big Jim. And I feel that, you know, there's going to be a discussion by the kids because, I mean, I don't see all of the kids going right, going like, okay, well, guess we got to kill Big Jim. Well, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't think that. I think that Angie will be the one advocating that we have to do it because of what of the storm happened. But I, I feel like Joe might step in and say, hey, we can't just kill somebody. I can see Joe feeling that way. Junior definitely won't be interested. No. Um, but they're all going to have to do it together. Or right. They, or it won't count. Right. According to the dome. Uh, potentially. We don't We don't know. So Barbie's on the run. I don't know what his next move is. Because uh, how is he supposed only, to prove his innocence? There's nowhere to hide unless you're going to Bird Island to hide in a mansion. Yeah, which he very well could. But then Big Jim knows exactly where yeah. he is. Um, so he's just gone to ground inside the woods. He doesn't really have until until Julia wakes up. There is no proof. No. To no. well, Joe. Joe is the only proof because Joe is behind Barbie, saying like seeing that he was helping her. But he was not a witness to the actual shot, to mm -mm. the actual shooting. So it's just a character witness. Yeah. Um, in which case, like, Linda should know, too. Right. That, like, he's a good person because he's done a lot of good for the town and saved lives. Come on, Linda. I'm hoping that she finds him first and they have a talk. And then she realizes, okay, we got to take care of this. But it looks like from the scenes from next week, Big Jim is just, like, living it up. Mm-hmm. Nori was in jail. Yeah, I mean, and he, like, hit her. Yeah. And Car so next week is when Carolyn's going to go mama yes. bear on him. yes can't wait to see that mm -hmm. and i feel there might be more bad guys coming from bird island I just yes feel it. i just feel it i feel it too uh jackie where can the people find you at one two three jackie underscore b on twitter at one two three jackie b all one word on instagram and jackie is spelled j-a-c-q-u-e all right and you can find me on twitter at matt lieberman that's m-a-t-t-l-i-e-b-e-r-m-a-n you can also find me here on after buzz tv on the breaking bad and low winter sun after shows thank you guys so much and we will see you next week from bing.com executive producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire after buzz tv staff we would like to thank you for listening to the after buzz tv network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.